I spent Tuesday more pissed off about this build than at any other point in the last year, if I had to guess. So that's how my week's going for me. But I think I've got a solution. We're gonna talk about it later in the episode. But first of all, I gotta thank you guys. My first ever merch drop was a crazy success. I thought it'd take me give or take two months to sell all of my shirts. And instead, everything sold out in about four hours. And that's crazy to me. So give me a few more days. I'm getting everything packaged up and shipped out. In this episode, we're gonna build a rear strut bar and we're gonna use it to mount our intercooler. And then we're gonna get our brakes mounted on the car, which requires redrilling our rotor hats. We're gonna make lots of progress in this one, lots of fabrication, so let's dive right into it and get something done. Now that the engine runs, the engine bay of the Ferrari really does feel like it's coming together, but as mentioned previously, there are still a few things that we need to do. Pulling inspiration from the legendary Colin Chapman, I want our next edition to serve two purposes. I wanna build a chassis support structure across the engine bay, and I wanna build a mount to support our heavy, water-filled intercooler. Luckily, we're not gonna be using the original shock mount tabs for our suspension, so they're gonna be perfect for this dual purpose job. It's been a while since we've done any tube work, so we're gonna dive back into it with the basics. We're gonna build a couple of tube receivers to fit in those original shock mounts, and we're gonna do it the easy way. I bought some washers that match our one and a half inch tube diameter, and I'm simply removing all of the zinc plating and welding it to some properly cut tube pieces. The reason the zinc plating needs to be removed is that although it can be welded over, vaporized zinc is toxic, and I'd rather not be breathing that in. The result is two pieces that we can actually bolt into those original shock connections. All we need now is a tube to go between them, so I pulled out the tubing bender and got to work. The tube needs bends because it needs to jog around the K24's cylinder head. But with 30 degree bends and some proper copes, we're in business to make this thing clear. Getting the tube copes and the length correct was a process of repetition. It took a lot of work to get it just right and to make sure that everything in the engine bay was straight and square. Because this tube hugs the engine so closely, it'll be very apparent if everything isn't perfectly straight. I welded this tube up with 332nds tungsten and 16th inch filler rod, and it was definitely the most comfortable I've been welding with TIG so far. It offered a new level of control over my weld puddle, and I'm really excited to continue trying this combo with future tube work. All right, well, while my parts are cooling down, I went next door, I got a haircut, obviously, and I got a phone call from the company building my wheels. And they have said they have just realized that two of the halves that arrived are incorrect. And there's not a way to make them work for what I want. So it's another delay. It's another three to four weeks at minimum. And that's if I even believe the timeline that they give me. I, I don't know. To say I'm pissed off right now is a massive understatement. I am, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I'm so pissed. It's just, It's ridiculous. So I want to like scream and yell at somebody and I know that that won't get me anywhere. I don't even know who to yell at. Either somebody messed up the ordering process or somebody messed up the manufacturing process. Nobody wants to really hold themselves accountable right now. Uh, and I'm the one left holding the bag, so to speak. Um, and it's, I'm, I'm so pissed off right now. It's ridiculous. Um, so I think the solution at the moment is to switch gears. I think I need to come up with a different solution. Obviously these wheels will get built at some point. I have money invested in them, but I can't let it keep holding up the car. Uh, my vision is important and at some point we'll see them on the car, but I need to get this car done. It sucks because I know that the entire industry, honestly, the entire world is in like production hell right now, but I don't know, I've been waiting eight months. I can't go forever. But yeah, I don't know. I'm pissed. I don't want to work on this car at all right now. I want to put the torch down and go home. Um, and I might, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm in a place to be productive at the moment, which sucks. Shit ruins my day. There are definitely times where this wheel thing feels not worth it that whether it is or not is to be decided. So I don't know. 
I gotta figure out what to do. I'll catch you guys in a bit. So I took a breather and then I got back to work because this car isn't gonna finish itself. The finished cross brace looks awesome in the engine bay and the time that I spent to make sure this thing was nice and straight with the engine I think was well worth the effort. The tube does sit pretty close to the valve cover, but I'm not worried about it because I don't expect the engine to move much at all, and if it does, I can always add a nice finish notch to the tube itself for clearance. We could have gone for more clearance, but it was important to me that the tube cross over the center of our intercooler. I want a mount that can evenly distribute the weight of this thing, especially because it's not going to be lightweight. We've got a little bit of room to play with between the tube and the intercooler itself, so I got out the tape measure and took a bunch of important measurements for me to draw something up in Fusion 360. Some of you guys might recognize this part, because it's the bracket that we drew up and had cut to hold our ECU to our firewall. For some design continuity, we're going to reuse it again. What I've got here is the CAD file for our intercooler and end tanks, as well as the tube crossing over the top of it, which represents exactly what we have in the engine bay. Our ECU mount works fantastic as a nice looking base plate we can weld to the intercooler, and with that we can then attach some vertical mounts to it that can straddle underneath our crossbar. From there, using Fusion 360 sheet metal tools, I drew up some steel sheet metal mounts that we can have cut out of single flat pieces, and then fold up and weld to our crossbar for mounts. Using some bolts, we can bolt the whole thing together, and what we should have is a nice, really secure, and very sturdy mount that can hold up the intercooler and the weight of the fluid inside of it. It should also do a good job of spreading that load across the top of the intercooler. Last but not least, I think that it's a simple but cool looking design that should complement everything else in the engine bay without being an eyesore, given that it's visible right on top of everything. Now, understandably, some of you guys are going to be typing in the comments, hey, you need to mount this thing with rubber. It needs to be able to move with the engine because it's connected to it. Well, initially, I thought the same thing. I had every intention of designing some sort of kind of rubber isolating mount for this thing until I realized it doesn't need to move. In fact, I think it makes a lot more sense to solid mount the intercooler because all of our hard piping that's connected to it, we have vibrant HD clamps, and those allow quite a bit of movement. It's kind of the same idea as a silicone coupler. So instead, we're gonna allow the HD clamps to have some movement if and when needed. I don't expect the engine to move very much, as discussed. So overall, I think this is the right approach. The only fear I have is the potential further down the line for some sort of fatigue cracking, because it's a lot of weight and it's welded aluminum, but I think it should be fine. We've got a lot of surface area. Fingers crossed this is gonna work pretty well. I feel good about it. And I think it should look kind of good. We'll see. It's been nearly six months since we got the big brake kit for the Ferrari, and at the time we couldn't install it because the rotor hats were drilled to 5x120.65 for the bolt pattern. This kit was originally meant for a Corvette. I changed my bolt pattern to 5x114.3, and so now we need to make the rotor hats match. To remedy this, I took the rotors over to my buddy Brett's shop, Nimmo Machine. He set them up on the mill and got to work converting them so that they'd have both bolt patterns in case I ever decide to go back. As he does with everything, he made the entire process look easy. He knocked all four rotor hats out in a matter of an hour, only slowing down to talk shop. With everything wrapped up, we finally have some rotors that are both 5x114.3 and 5x120. And best of all, that means we can finally install them on our spindles. And unsurprisingly, they're a perfect fit, thanks to Brett as always. It's also an opportunity to finally use my titanium Battlecraft lug nuts to hold these things into place. I can only hope they're visible once the wheels are installed. The rotor itself looks awesome installed on the hub, and now it's time to get the calipers fitted. We spoke about them in a previous episode, but as a quick crash course, we're using AP Racing's Pro 5000R Radical calipers. The rears are a two-piston setup, while the fronts are a six-piston system. And I went with these brakes because they are the single largest setup we can fit underneath our wheels. Along with the calipers, we've got brackets in order to mount them, so we need to install those first before the calipers can go on. Thankfully, everything is a bolt-on affair, and now we can say we have a brake package installed on the car. 
seeing the rear rotor and caliper on the car is hugely motivating. But if you thought the rear brake looked good, wait till you see the fronts. The 355mm front brake package is pushing the limits of what we can fit underneath the 17-inch wheel, but it'll clear the 18-inch track wheel package with no problem. And as far as how well the kit fits the car, I'm relieved to say that it fits quite well, and that might sound surprising, but this kit is meant to fit a Corvette, not aftermarket Corvette spindles. So thankfully, Speedway Motors got their end of the deal correct, and everything works in unison. Now it's just a matter of plumbing it to our pedal box. Now because we're using front spindles in the rear of the car, and yes, we still need to modify them to accept a rear axle, they currently pivot because we don't have a track rod in place, but the spindles did come with these steering arms that I think we can repurpose to lock them into place. As it stands, they jog over the lower ball joint and bolt to the spindle itself, and they're meant so that you can steer it at the front of the car. But if we affix a turnbuckle to this arm, we can use it to control the rear toe, and if we affix this arm into place, the toe shouldn't move throughout the suspension's travel. So I think we'll affix the other end to the control arm itself instead of to the chassis, giving us a fixed toe curve instead of one that's dynamic. And the more that I think about this toe link solution, the more I think it's the right one. Because if I were to make a toe link that's adjustable and on its own pivot, if I don't perfectly nail the position of that pivot point on the chassis side, I'm gonna have toe deflection through the travel of the suspension. Now I'm sure someone out there could point out that you want a little bit one way or the other. I couldn't say for certain. I'm not a suspension guru. I just know the basics. If I don't nail it, it's not gonna work correctly. It's gonna introduce all sorts of weird variables and problems. I'd rather lock it into place. So we're gonna give ourselves some adjustability. We'll use a turnbuckle. We're gonna attach it to the control arm and it will keep that wheel fixed in terms of toe as the suspension cycles and travels. And I think that's gonna work really well for what we want the car to do. Now I've got two sets of those arms because I've got two sets of these spindles. So I'm gonna use them up front to baseline our steering measurements and start figuring out what we need to change, what we need to build in order to get this thing to turn the way we want it to with a focus on getting the Ackerman angle correct. Now, I know that this won't work most likely, but instead of custom designing something and then having parts cut and then welding to the spindle, we can start with a bolt-on solution, remove it, modify it, what have you, and then either machine or you know have something cut for the final part. Now let's talk about the other side of the car. You guys have heard me say plenty of times at this point, I'm waiting to finish the other side until I have wheels in hand so that I know what I have already designed and built will work, the wheels will fit, so on and so forth. Well, you also heard me say, we've got yet another wheel delay and I don't even know if I believe the timeline that I've been given. And as said, I just, I can't keep playing this game. So what did I do? Well, I turned to my friends, Jason and Brian at Rotiform. I've known them for over a decade at this point. They've helped with wheels on so many projects of mine. We've done tons of cool stuff together. And I said, hey, Jason, I need some solution here. I need a set of track wheels. Let's build some 18s. Let's do something cool. What can we do? So we're working on something right now. He says that we should be able to build them pretty quickly. We're trying to come up with something that can be done quickly so that we're not in you know, parts supply hell, so to speak. Um, but because I know that Jason will deliver wheels the, in the measurements that I have asked for, we're going to go in and build the other side of the car. We should get it done. That way when we get wheels, we can mount tires and just put this thing on the ground. So I think over the weekend, I'm going to get started building control arms. We're going to get our spindles mounted and get the brakes on if we can. Hopefully we'll get this thing all put together and be one big step closer to putting it on the ground. So that's my big update. I'm trying to make lemonade out of lemons. I still want to see these wheels that I have put a lot of time and money into on the car at some point. We'll see them eventually. I'll show you what they are if, if I ever get them back. Um, but I'm tired of letting it hold up the car, and I know I can do something cool with my friends who have supported me a ton of times in the past. So I simply called up Jason and said, hey, let's do something for this thing. And it sounds like we've got something pretty cool in the works. So I'll keep you guys in the loop. That's my big update. So trying to turn the episode around, I'm feeling better. It's a good solution. I feel good about it. So with all that said, that's all I got for this episode. I'll catch you guys next week. See how much I can get done on the other side of the car over the weekend. I appreciate the support as always.